Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from SegaCDUniverse.com. Today I'm going to do a little two-parter. Um, I'm going to call it, I guess, most expensive Sega CD games. Uh, years ago, when I started my collection, most of the games that were rare, like Snatcher and Cobra Space Adventure, were maybe 60 to 80 bucks. I've looked online now and cannot believe, like Keo Flying Squadron, I think I might have got for 70. I don't really remember. It's been a very long time. Um, Online now, it's like $300. I sold one for $399. That's ridiculous. So, um, there's a gentleman on YouTube named Wasting Time, Wasting Time. I met, you may have heard me say his name before because he has uh, asked for videos. And he does, thank you very much, by the way. He does look at my videos frequently and talks to me and stuff. Um, he said, why don't you do a movie or a video about um, the most expensive games and how they play? I said, you know what? I was thinking about that and you reinforced it, so that's good enough for me. So, here we go. We're going to start off with um, Mad Dog 2, The Lost Gold. I had no idea this one was rare. He kind of said it, and I was like, really? Um, I always loved this one, and I actually liked it a lot better than the first one. I'm not very good at it, but you can't win them all. <clears throat> Stranger, and welcome aboard. We're going to do a little target practice here to get you started. So as you see, it's an FMV shooter. Um, it was in the arcades. So when I was young, I would, you know, see this and go, oh my God, you can interact with the movie. I can't believe this. And I was like, and had a gun that you'd pick up in the arcade. I don't know if, you know, if you're not old enough to remember this, you'd pick up the gun you and you'd... Hit that dynamite. You I'm usually good at this, but better than that. I'm going to start over, because I'm usually much better. <laughs> um, so you'd have a gun, like a plastic gun in the arcade. And, uh... It was just cool. To reload, you had to kind of like push the gun back down into its holster, sort of. And um, it's just an interesting idea. I don't, you know, they don't do it anymore, obviously, because you know, kid now, they would want to play this. I don't think, but it's definitely unique and different. I like it. We're gonna do a little target practice here to get you started. See if you can hit that gun. Not bad. Here we go. Getting it back. Shoot that skull. And if you hit them, you see your bullets double. What a bullet from that side! Oh! Looks like that prospector went into porcupine, one with feathers! Stranger. This is the map to the gold. The Padre has the other half. Watch out for mad. Oh. Everyone always pops in the same spot, so. If you can remember. Where these people are and get them before they get you, then you're in pretty good shape. It's kind of trial and error. Very much so. Hey partner, we better get into town. I think the camera's cleaning it up a little bit, so it doesn't look as good on the TV that it looks on the viewfinder, but you know, it looks pretty good for an old FMV game, almost full screen. It's not great. But it ain't, you know, horrific. Okay, I don't remember which one comes out first. I had to get killed, alright. Damn it. We may have to dream you up. And you get three lives, and then depending on the difficulty, you get 15 or continues or 10 continues. And you could do two players, so you could switch back and forth if you have two controllers. So now you know this guy's gonna pop up here first, obviously. Next one here. I always thought this was cool. I like when people fall off of things in movies and stuff. I'm pulling the thing back down to, to reload. That's what that icon is. I'm reloading. Bob! 
You look honest, my friend. Find a treasure, return it to the mission, and receive your reward in heaven. Choose your God. So now, in this part, you can. This is what's cool about this one. I, I didn't play the first one enough, but <clears throat> in this one, you're able to pick a guide. And whoever you choose changes the story. Oh crap, I didn't pick one, so pick this guy for me. I'm not, I don't know this one at all. I usually pick Buckskin Bonnie. Bitch. I usually pick Buckskin Bonnie, I'm much better with her. One size fits all. For at least knowing her, the method of which, which way to go. I wish I would've pushed the button instead of, oh, there we go, instead of speaking. <laughs> If you hold B or C when you move the icon around, it speeds up your uh, your target. Right there, if you shoot hard, the game ends. Plus, I think they put a lot of you know little special effects in there. I mean, that was pretty cool. Got a light. Then they ruin it with stuff like that, but it makes me chuckle because it's so bad. Come on, partner, let's go find that treasure. Yeah! No! Damn it! That's the other thing that sucks. You only get one shot off. Well, they only get one I shot think off. Think you're gonna have to put more money in this game. Uh, they broke the uh, what is it? The fourth world, the fourth dimension of gaming, where they talk that you're in a game. So, the sound's pretty good. It is a little choppy in ways, or you do hear little glitches here and there. Um, the graphics are pretty nice. And uh, it keeps my interest. I mean, it's a lot of trial and error. Very goofy, obviously. shoot an innocent, you're in trouble. So like right now I think someone runs out. There we go. Later on there are items on the screen that you have to get, so you have to shoot the items. Um, there's a, a lantern at one point I remember specifically. This part's hard. Or frustrating I should say. I wish there was a way for me to hold down B or C without holding it. Why don't my bullets go away? What was up with that? Well, you got two lives left. Choose your. I like how it leaves off where you left off. So, um, you know, it just continues right here. Doesn't start all over from when you picked her. I guess because he's reloading, it's supposed to be like a standoff. Well, your history, partner. All right, so I think I'm probably going to stop here. You get the gist of it. Um, I hope you liked it. I mean, I think it's a pretty cool game. I remember as a kid playing this at a friend's house, and I just was so enamored by the fact that you could shoot people in like a movie. Um, it's repetitive, and the, uh, the the price tag probably isn't warranted, but it's a cool game. And uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to now show Radical Rex. All right, here we go with some Rattle Re Radical Rex on the Sega CD. Wow. Now this is also on Genesis and Super Nintendo, so I'm assuming it didn't have the good the good music, but you know the quality mu of music. Um, graphics are pretty nice. Probably just slightly upgraded with the color. Well, actually, they couldn't do more colors, but it's probably slightly upgraded because of the Sega City's power. Right, I can't take it anymore, I'm sorry. <laughs> Plus, up. Oh, kick, fire, jump, roar. Alright. I remember this one being pretty good. I remember doing a little review for it on SegaCDUniverse.com, and I thought it was a pretty, uh, pretty decent platformer. I'm not a big platformer guy. 
<clears throat> Dinos hear me, you are in my power. It's the mammal's hour. <clears throat> oh Jesus, he's rapping. <clears throat> What an intro. It would hold up nowadays, I'm sure. He was sleeping during the whole thing. Huh. Oh god, Stella Doro's coming. I don't know if you hear her in the background yelling. Yeah. Okay, so. Fire. Kick. Okay, now there's so much crap on the screen that I don't know who's for me and who's not. So I, I don't know like, what the hell. I'm afraid of touching anything. Like graphics are pretty nice, pretty big too. I wonder if I could kind of make this brightness go down a bit because it looks like it's really killing me. It's a little washed out, guys. Sorry. I don't know why it's doing that filming, but... Very floaty, like the controls. Oh, you build your war meter up in the right hand corner, and I guess you only have so much fire, too, it looks like. Yeah, the fire's almost gone. There we go, I recharged a little bit. Oh, that's a bunch of shit I just got. Nice. Kick you in the face! What the hell is that? Oh, that must be a checkpoint. Look at him standing there. Getting so friggin' cool. He is. What would be the point of killing those, uh... Bird, not birds, uh, mosquitoes or whatever the hell they are. Whee! How do you get up there? My war is almost built up, guys. There's just so much crap on the screen. It's impressive, but it's also very distracting. I'm gonna pause for a second. I, I guess I can't... I was really hoping to change the, the brightness, but it doesn't seem like it's... Doing anything. It's definitely fast. It's similar. Yeah, I would, I would say it's similar to Sonic. What if I put the light on? Maybe it would, I don't know if that helped, but I thought maybe it would uh, make it not use as much brightness. I turned two lights on now, so I don't know if that's gonna help, let's see. I guess a hundred is a new life or something? Alright, I got my roar up. Stella's here, as you can tell, with her screaming. No bonus. 
I know, Stella. This is me off too. You know, bonus. Ridiculous. So, the graphics are, are pretty good. Um, this audio, the load times aren't too bad. I think if you like platformers, you, you, you could probably do a lot worse. It, I don't recall how much it was online, but I think it was pretty expensive. And I don't, uh, I don't, again, I don't know if any of these games warrant that price tag. Maybe just Snatcher. I do like Cobra the Space Adventure too, but, uh, that's like primarily a no graphical novel. I don't know if anyone would really pay that for, you know, pay a lot for it. Stop it! Oh, Jesus. Stella's in the mix again, guys. I lose everything. I lose my roar and everything. Wow. Alright, so I think I'm going to stop here on Radical Rex. It's, it's pretty cool, you know. Um, it's not something I would really want to play it to the end. Or If I was young, if I was a kid and I had this, I'd be like, oh my god, this is amazing. But, again, I'm not a big platformer fan, so it doesn't do a ton for me, but I still know it's, you know, pretty good quality. So, um, and now we're on to the next game. Let's do, uh, let's do Popful Mail. How about that? Okay, so here's Popful Mail. Um, this game's awesome. Very underrated. I'm surprised it didn't get, like, transferred over to any other consoles or virtual consoles or anything like that digitally. This is a good game. People say it's pretty short and I found it to be a little difficult. Oh cool. One of the few games that uses a RAM card. Um, I found it to be a little difficult but it's definitely good. I actually have a copy of it on my PSP um, because I own the original obviously as you see and uh, I, pl I played that a little bit one day. Really good. As you can tell, the big deal with this game is that, you know, there's voice acting, decent voice acting at that, and it's like anime cutscenes, so that was cool. I like the stereotypical Italian accent on the baker or whatever the hell he is. That reminds me of, uh, it was a Total Recall, where she hands her head with the bomb in it. The original one, not the crappy remake of Colin Farrell. The woman who's like, two weeks, and then she hands her head with the bomb in it and says, get ready for a big surprise, and her head blows up.
right, I'm gonna skip this only because she goes to the shop. The guy has like a hundred million heads, and then she reads a uh, a sign that this guy Muttonhead is an evil magician, and that um, there's a bounty on his head. And she's like, "Oh, this is my day!" And she starts running after, you know, this adventure. So this is like the main screen. There we go. We pick where you're gonna go, obviously. The only thing I don't like about this game, it's cool because you can, you know, kill people and get money and buy things and upgrade your character. So that's really cool. I don't like how, like, if you look, look where I am on the screen. I would have liked that the camera moves from back here so I can see what's coming. Sometimes I'm so close to things that by the time I walk up to them, I get hit. That's my only complaint about this game. Everything else, awesome. Great side-scrolling action RPG. Good music too. You think they would have made some PSP or something when like, like uh you know ported it over. Hey! Hey you! They should do a Sega CD collection of games. Like both Lunars, what was that? this, maybe Sonic CD. Well, I guess that would be a different company Sega made that, but hey, are you blind or something? Up in the tree, a dunderhead. Okay, Stella. Um, excuse me? I think you're confused. Can't skip this, sorry guys. I believe later you can change characters too. Now, I remember there being like a store at the bottom of something. Maybe that's later. Ah, fuck. Wow, I just got raped. Bad. Oh my god. That was really bad. Alright, so I, I could have swore. Why wow, do I have any items? Man. Um, I could have swore there was a uh, village down here somewhere with like an item shop. Maybe that's later on though. Camera, not today. Two million? Are we talking gold here? Who do you think I am? Yeah. More bucks? Sit there and stay there, Belle. Hmm. You did a good job as a co-host last time, but not, you know, not every time. Listen, if you're not going to take me with you, and by the way, I think that's a big mistake, could you please tell the villagers where I am? It's the least you can do. Oh, all right. Why not? Which way to go at this point, but let's see. It's kind of about a lot about timing, you know. So it is it is a platformer deep down, but I don't mind it because I don't need keys. I don't mind it because uh, you know there's RPG elements and I like that. What is that? I wonder if I'm. Someone give me some damn health. Jesus Christ, you chintzy bastards. 
And then all the guys respawn. I mean, that's good because you need money, but it sucks because it's, it makes it difficult if you have to run away or something. Ah! Uh, I'll try that jump once more, and then I'm going to just go the other way. If it matters, I'm not really going to save the game and replay it from here anyway. No, I guess I need something later on to get that far or something. But if I don't get to the item shop, there is an item shop down in like a, uh, a village that you're able to upgrade your sword and shield and I, I guess armor and stuff. God, it's so annoying. <clears throat> As you can tell, the music's good. The graphics are nice. The story's good. There's cutscenes. There's anime quality, well, anime quality back then, it's probably all hand drawn, you know, um, anime quality cutscenes, so, pretty good stuff, if you, if you like RPGs, like maybe side-scrolling RPGs, or, uh, even like Zelda 2 type stuff, I think you should dig it. Hold on, no, come on, get down. You gotta knock it over. Get down. I'm sorry, I know. Oh, fuck me, I missed the jump because I'm focusing on you. There's also a lot of like little places you can go, as you see, like, you don't have to just take a straight path, so that's cool, you, you know, you could change up where you go and get different things and such. Oh, there we go, that's the village I was looking for. I played this game before on the PSP, like I said, and I, I forgot the where the village was, I, I just passed it. 71 bucks, Jesus. Hundred ninety dollars, one hundred eighty. I guess I, I don't know if I have a We'll cheat with shield and leather mail. I guess I don't. I don't have the money for that. How about the wood shield? There we go, I didn't have a shield, alright. Alright, so you get the gist of it. This is going to end the part one of the most expensive Sega CD games. Thanks for watching. It's Vampire Mike from SegaCDUniverse.com. And now I'm going to start up uh, filming the second part. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Be good, guys.